Marriage can be full of utopia and bliss, or filled with challenges and stress. But definitely, marriage is a journey. How do you handle your baggage? Experience the marriage that God always wanted you to have through the Marriage Utopia series with Stephen and Ann Butterfield. Welcome to episode number four, Marriage Utopia. Yay. The marriage that God always wanted you to have. Yay. We are so excited that you are here and we pray that you have been blessed by what you've heard already and we yeah. pray that we're going to continue to do things that would allow you to enhance your marriage that it really would be the marriage that God always wanted you to have. We've yeah. been talking about the baggage. Uh, the name of the book, the name of this uh, 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 series is Marriage the Journey, How Do You Handle the Baggage? Yes, yes. And so we're yes. talking about the baggage. And the first part of the baggage is our family traits. Mm -hmm. We went through that, and we hopefully that you've uh, listened to that and got something out of it and, and, and continue to uh, make sure you order the book mm -hmm. at ButterfieldsMinistriesWorldwide.com forward slash the store. And... Go to lulu.com in order there too, in Amazon. Okay, marriage and journey, how do you handle the baggage? And so uh, the baggage we talked about is family traits. Now we're going to talk about belief, habits, and unresolved issues. So my wife is going to talk about belief and habits. Mm -hmm. So here comes my wife, Ann Butterfield. Thank on you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord um, for coming to you one more time to share uh, with you um, concerning this book, Marriage the Journey, How Do You Handle the Baggage, um, that was uh, written and published by Stephen Butterfield. We are so happy that, that you have tuned in to, to share with us again uh, on today. And we're going to talk about beliefs beliefs, um, core values taught by family and also life experiences. That's how we get and develop our beliefs is our family and life experiences. So when we take a look at uh, religious beliefs, when we look at religious belief, that's a whole issue by itself. When we have people who are Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Jewish, atheist, Pentecostal, holy, and Christians, we have a whole different ball game when we bring all of that together or two people together with these two different with two different um, uh, belief systems concerning religion. Uh, let us take a look at Second Corinthians uh, six and fourteen. And it says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. We can't be uh, yoked together with unbelievers. Meaning that if you are a Christian, you should not be marrying a non-Christian. Amen. All right? Christians must be careful not to become entangled with Christians who have different beliefs than themselves. And so you may be saying, okay, a Christian can't marry another Christian. Uh, we are really not saying that, but the thing is, is that as a Christian, uh, you need to be believing the same thing. It says, how can two walk together except they believe yes, they and they agree? Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, you could uh, come into a relationship with another Christian and you are feeling like, okay, this, this, this should be fine because um, they are Christians, but you've got to find out if they believe what you believe. Amen. All right. So you really got to uh, really study the word and really live by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, there are some general uh, beliefs, um, generational traditions, and a way of life. And we have a few examples of these general beliefs. And one is be independent or no man is an island. 
these are just beliefs that we as peace people have, you know, the population I have. Number two, one spouse believe men should not do housework. <laughs> And the other believe that men should not, and others believe that men, men should not do housework. So if the male spouse believe that he should not do housework and the wife believe that he should, there will be some type of content at the crib. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not uh, agreeing on these things, but you, understanding we are talking about these beliefs and sometimes people believe that they they have certain things that they should not be doing in the house mm -hmm. and certain things that uh, we have a uh, uh, we believe that women have certain duties in the house mm -hmm. and men have certain duties in the house mm -hmm. but um, we have to come to an agreement as to what is going to work for us right. Uh, in our house. Mm -hmm. If one spouse believes in dressing modest or one may believe in dressing uh, vulgar. So you got to come together and see how you're going to work that. So you have to make sure that you understand the beliefs of those that, that are uh, uh, with you. Be courteous or mean-spirited person that is courteous or you can be mean-spirited. So if you got uh, a person that's very nice and courteous, uh, then you got a mean-spirited person, you're going to have some problems uh, in, in that uh, relationship. But because we have these beliefs, we think that we are right and correct the way that we think mm -hmm. and the way that we feel and how we believe about this thing because we have now grew up with our families and with life experiences that has taught us uh, to be this way. And we think, oh, it, that's just me. Mm -hmm. If you're mean-spirited, uh, that's just me. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're kind, you say, that's me. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but we have to be courteous, be courteous um, to one another. But if we're courteous uh, and a person is mean-spirited, then now we got to uh, look at that and see what we need to do about it. And as we grow and as we mature, our beliefs do change. Uh, they will change. We, you get with a person that um, is strong in the Lord and, um, and, and know the Lord and know the Word. And as you uh, study your word and, and be in, in church and Sunday school and Bible study and really listening to the word, you begin to really, really see what is really right, mm -hmm. you know, and you'll be able to change your mind. You'll, you'll get a renewing of the mind. Mm -hmm. You'll renew your mind. And the Lord says that we should renew our minds daily. We should renew our minds. So we got to make sure that we um, be able to renew our minds. Do unto others as they do unto you. You ever heard that before? Yep. Do unto others <laughs> as they do unto you. Mm -hmm. Or you may have someone say, uh, do unto others as you would have them to do mm -hmm. unto you. Mm -hmm. So we have to just get those uh, areas um, cleared um, in relationships, mm -hmm. whether husband-wife relationships or just brother and sister relationship uh, or just friends relationship we really do have to get to know and understand uh, one another and the different beliefs amen uh, and you know mm -hmm. i want to want to interject mm -hmm. that uh, the reason why it's important that even though we're christians mm -hmm. two two individuals are christians mm -hmm. they have different beliefs because you right. have uh let's say you have a young lady who who's been called by god mm -hmm. To minister the word of God. Right, right. But you have a, a she started dating a young man mm -hmm. whose belief system is women should not preach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now that female, if she mm -hmm. marry him, no. her ministry is going to be hindered right. because even if she pushed beyond what he wants to do mm -hmm. or what he believes and still do it, it's going to be conflict in the house. And so uh, we have a lot of people who get married because we're both Christians, mm -hmm. but our belief systems are still different. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some of those differences are so bad that it can 
prohibit a, a, a good relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you got a, a young lady who who uh, uh, God has called, mm -hmm. and she know God has called her, mm -hmm. and she get uh, uh, engaged to a, a, a young man mm -hmm. who don't believe women should preach, mm -hmm. you have a big conflict. big conflict. And so there's no reason to go beyond that because nothing good can come out of that. Right. Unless somebody know the word of God and understand that there's no male nor mm -hmm. female right. in Christ. Right, exactly. And so some, uh, because... Uh, and then, so uh, we have to make sure that we don't just say, "Well, he's saved, I'm saved." Mm -hmm. No, what is what does he really believe? Mm -hmm. What does she really believe? Right. Because right. Uh, some women could believe that mm -hmm. uh, uh, as long as I don't show uh, my nipples, I can still show mm -hmm. my cleavage mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. But if you got a man who is who's a uh, uh, Modest and, and yeah, chase. Yeah, yeah. He don't want his wife going showing out looking, showing, showing mm -hmm. that. So you're gonna have conflict mm -hmm. if you don't understand these different mm -hmm. beliefs mm -hmm. that that individuals can have. Mm -hmm. It can be really a big mm -hmm. problem big in a problem. relationship. Yeah. So just just make sure that you understand each other belief system mm -hmm. and and and, and uh, areas where you you uh, 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 engage with that person and see if you can grow. If but if you can't. That person refused to want to even have an open mind to what the mm -hmm. truth of the gospel right. is. Because right. it could be you too. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, your, your belief system could be messed mm -hmm. up. But mm -hmm. it, 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 it behooves us to want to grow mm -hmm. and change our belief system that it becomes what God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, it'll mm -hmm. really, really be uh, an issue in a relationship. Right, exactly. And then the, the other part, uh, too, when you're in a relationship, the husband and wife relationship, um, the one of the spouses may not uh, want to tithe. Well, absolutely. I mean, may absolutely. not want to tithe, absolutely. and um, and now you're coming into maybe <laughs> someone thinking about getting married, mm -hmm. and um, and they are dealing with someone that that don't believe in tithing. Uh -huh. You need to really kind of check that belief system out. That either they get on track with you, mm -hmm. uh, and that and the word that's saying that we should tithe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. give an offering. That's right. You know, and so if that person can't come on board, let me tell you, if you may want to think about marrying that person. And if you're not already married that person, you may want to try to help get some word into them concerning uh, those areas because you definitely, uh, it's, it's beliefs and, and it's a belief that a person has yes. and their family and life experiences may be on top of them. You don't give your, you don't give a tie. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give a tie, mm -hmm. but, um, you have to make sure that you, um, understand and hold your ground to mm -hmm. what you believe. Don't let anyone sway you mm -hmm. from believing what you know the word is saying. Right. I'm not, right. I'm saying, I'm not saying don't. Uh, change your mind about some of these beliefs that you don't receive from family members mm -hmm. and from life experiences. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about what the word yes. has put in you. Yes. Uh, you you want to make sure you're going by the word. Amen. Amen. So Amen. we praise God. And then another thing, I wanted you to talk, uh, uh, say something about this. Be independent or no man is an island. Yeah, what uh, uh, some people are taught that uh, don't let nobody take care of you. Take care of yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Be independent. Mm -hmm. But if you're a spouse, mm -hmm. you can't be independent. Right. <laughs> you have to be dependent on, on each other. On each other, yeah. And because it's, yeah. it's a collaboration uh, in a relationship, in a marriage relationship, it's collaboration, so you got to work mm -hmm. together. But some people are trained, and that's why you have some, even some females, are uh, 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 dominant Mm -hmm. And they feel like uh, I got I can I got my own money I got my own this right, and you're right. gonna have conflict in a relationship mm -hmm. when you have that and so mm -hmm. uh, 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 but but those individuals are taught that growing up growing up don't mm -hmm. let nobody take care of you take care mm -hmm. of yourself mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we train our kids how to be independent right but then right. Uh, uh, you got to have uh, a moderation on what independence really means right is exactly. that because you want them to be able to take care of themselves. But if there, if there's a man, you want him to be able to take care of his household. Mm -hmm. If it's a woman, you want her to be able to support her household. Mm -hmm. So you got to got to make sure you train them the right way mm -hmm. to what independence really means. Right. And so people right. get conflict in that, and uh, people think that uh, 
uh, when it says no man is an island, mm -hmm. you are not by yourself. Right, right, right. So you right. can't just, you can't, you can't, uh, uh, and this is what our family relationship should train us. That's why you get different siblings in the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're able to communicate and, to, and work with long mm -hmm. with your siblings in the house because everybody have a different mm -hmm. responsibility, right. should have a different responsibility in the house. Right. And so you learn how to work with, it, work with people. And give and take, not just mm -hmm. you taking all the time mm -hmm. or you giving mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to give and take. Mm -hmm. And so you're not by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're, mm -hmm. uh, so when you get in a relationship, you can't have an attitude or belief system that, hey, mm -hmm. it's only me I got to look out for. Right, right. Because right. when, you, when you get in a relationship, you're going to see. Yeah, it's more than you. More than you. Yeah. And that's a good point. Because um, if a person grows up in a household, it's just one child, mm -hmm. then they really think everything is mine. Everything belongs to them. Everything is mine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to share with anybody, mm -hmm. and everything I get, it belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And so if the uh, parents don't teach them by inviting people mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. and have a sleepover, whatever, mm -hmm. their belief system will be that what's mine is mine. Mm -hmm. That's it. So um, it is very, very important that we um, really check out and get to know uh, people. And like I said, if we are already married and in the in the marriage already, mm -hmm. now we need to start just working on it yes. because there's help, there's hope. And Pastor Butterfield got a book out there, There's Hope. And let me tell you, there's hope. I don't care what is going on. If you got life in you and you are still with your spouse, there's hope Amen. for you to continue that marriage. Amen. It, is, it is very, very hopeful that you will be able to do that. Just need to get someone, sit down and talk about it and see what need to be done. And I'm a stick note with the fact of the man and the woman, you're married, the man and a woman, you got the Holy Spirit and you got God. Right. So it's four y'all working right. on this project. Yeah. And I believe um, God and the Holy Spirit can help lead a mind mm -hmm. that is made up yes. to follow God. Absolutely. So no matter what your belief system is, if you kind of can kind of like um, let all of that go and try to flow in with what God is saying and what the Word is saying, because if, if there's a belief system and someone is uh, saying, okay, that is not correct, maybe you want to just check it out and see mm -hmm. what is the Bible saying mm -hmm. concerning this. And once you look it up and find out, or maybe you may have to ask somebody. Uh, besides uh, your spouse, you may have to ask somebody else, but the two of you um, checking it out with a counselor or something. But I, I, we personally know that God is is a helper mm -hmm. and He a keeper, and He will bring us through uh, any situation and circumstance that we get ourselves into. And so we was talking about beliefs beliefs mm -hmm. and now we are going to you want to add anything else to the beliefs no, no, uh so we're going to um talk about the habits mm -hmm. our habits and habits um they change as well because when we um as we mature in life our habits will change just as our beliefs will change mm -hmm. once our beliefs change then the habits is going to start changing mm -hmm. for sure and so, um, we, but I'm going to give you, uh, from Pastor Butterfield's book, um, he lays out a couple of, uh, a few um, examples for us concerning habits. And so one is, um, what happens is learn behaviors that are practiced over time. Mm -hmm. Learn behaviors that are practiced over time. Yes. It's learn behaviors that are practiced over time. So that means that, you grew up with these. Mm -hmm. uh, you grew up with these these habits, mm -hmm. and someone taught them to you. Basically, mm -hmm. mostly uh, some of the habits we may pick up ourselves, but somebody is is teaching us most of our habits. Mm -hmm. So one of them is um, like squeezing the toothpaste from the bottom, uh, or uh, the middle of the tube. <laughs> From the bottom of the tube, but from the middle of the tube. Uh -huh. So 
uh, a spouse may have a problem with that. Oh, yeah. One with the one that squeezed the toothpaste from the bottom will have a problem with the one that's squeezing it from the middle. Absolutely. And one or both is going to be saying you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to come to a compromising, um, come to a place of compromising for these habits, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and, and uh, it, it's amazing because uh, our beliefs, mm -hmm. our family traits, and mm -hmm. our habits, mm -hmm. it's what we've been doing all our lives. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So it yeah. got to be right. It got to be right. <laughs> It's yeah, so right. so and we don't even acknowledge that right. there's something wrong with what we're doing. Right, exactly. And so when so, when we get in a relationship is when it's amplified. Yeah. That what you're doing is crazy. Yeah, it's like you're being confronted. Like now. you're being confronted. Yeah, you're being you confronted. begin to see yourself yeah. Yeah. because you got somebody yeah. that mirrors you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. so that's what a relationship right. really does yeah. is now amplify who you are. Mm -hmm. And so with your mm -hmm. habits, you know, uh, 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 if you got a problem with somebody mm -hmm. squeezing the toothpaste a certain way, right. the solution is get a pump. <laughs> oh, change the whole thing. Get the, get the yeah. toothpaste in a pump, mm -hmm. and that's so when they just pump it, yeah. come on their toothbrush, mm -hmm. and they're gone, so you don't have to worry about it. Right, all of that. And then you have people who um, put the toilet seat down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have people who uh, uh, don't want the toilet paper have to roll a certain way off the mm -hmm. roll. Right, right. I mean, it's amazing how these little things can cause a big conflict. Big conflict, big conflict, big, uh, big, conflict. Uh, big conflict. Yes, and and it really is. It it really doesn't matter. It's just a habit. It's just a habit. So we understand if that's that person's habit. That's what they know. That's that's what they know. That's and so it, it's not against you. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't love you right. uh, uh, mm -hmm. any more, any less. Mm -hmm. It's that's just, that's just their habit. That's the way they do it. That's, that's the way they do it. So I mean, uh, and, and to me, it doesn't matter how the toilet paper get rolled off, because mm -hmm. you know where you're mm -hmm. gonna put it. Yeah. Oh, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> don't so, say so, it. So so <laughs> so uh, the, the importance of that. We make little small little things, and the Bible said little. Fox mm -hmm. is the one that spoiled the, spoiled the vine. Right. And so we got to be careful in our relationship not to mm -hmm. allow little things mm -hmm. to it's hinder spoiled. our relationship. Yeah. So that's why we want you to understand your spouse or your fiance's right. habit. Right. right. Understand right. who they really are. Right. So when right. you when you understand them, then you can really deal with them. Right. Amen. And so, Amen. so uh, when you got that, mm -hmm. they squeeze the toothpaste another way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, that's that's a very important point uh, when you uh, talk, and we talk about communication a lot uh, in the book. Um, you gotta you gotta be able to communicate one with another, and sometimes um, even with like squeezing the, the toothpaste, when a person really can really see where you're coming from concerning the way you do. The, the toothpaste, mm -hmm. they may be able to just go mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. it. Uh -huh. They will say, "Okay, it's fine. It's really you, it ain't that important to me." I was just thinking, you you shouldn't do it that way. But if that's like key for you, then hey. But that's what love does. Amen. That's what love does. Amen. And we want to we want uh we want to be able to show uh, love. We want you to heal love, and we want you to. Be loved, and we want you to do love. Amen. Amen. So now, uh, another habit is eating at a specific, uh, specific time, a <laughs> uh, special time of the day. Your family always ate, sit down at the table at six. <laughs> you know, nobody can be late. You got to get out of work <laughs> on time. Uh, you got to tell your boss you got to go because you got to be at home by six so you can eat with everybody. But like I said, uh, he's explaining uh, to us that even these types of things may change mm -hmm. uh, in your household mm -hmm. with your family, even maybe seven o'clock mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of uh, 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 one spouse may be working late. And so it may be that you can't eat at seven o'clock mm -hmm. like um You've been used to, mm -hmm. but um, there is um, there is um, a way for us to understand each other 
and know that when there is some type of conflict in schedule, mm -hmm. then we now got to talk about it and see how we can work it out, right. that we can still come together mm -hmm. and eat, mm -hmm. or we know that we have to eat separate from each other, mm -hmm. but uh, the spouse can come and sit mm -hmm. with the spouse when they do get home, and, um, and you still can be together, and you got to make sure that you have some special time, even if it's only on Saturday, but you still... Got to bring the kids in. If you got kids or whatever, you still got to have that special time. So you got to work on it to bring it together. It don't have to be 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But um, you do need to have a special time that you, the family, uh, come together. And you can decide on that. Mm -hmm. uh, do not wear uh, shoes in the house. You don't <laughs> wear shoes in the house. Mm -hmm. You must take your shoes off at the front door. Now, you know there may be a whole lot of people... Uh, that we are talking to right now <laughs> about walking in the house with shoes on. Now, we don't take our shoes off at the door, uh, but there is a lot of people that take their shoes off at the front door. Absolutely. You know, people ain't coming, in, you ain't coming into the house with, with shoes on. Amen. You know? And so we know uh, uh, an apostle who, they, they you wasn't walking in their house with no <laughs> shoes on. Because his wife was going to get them shoes off your feet at the front door. Absolutely. That was for sure. Absolutely. You weren't coming into their house. One hour possibly. They both gone and be with the Lord now, so I ain't going to even call their name. But um, but uh, we love them. We love them so much. But um, you got something? Yes. Yeah. And, you, you know, um, uh, this also can be a family trait mm -hmm. that we were brought up mm -hmm. not to... Do walk that in, in the, the house, house with shoes, with shoes on. on. Yeah. And then what happens is, what 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 happens with family traits mm -hmm. is, uh, if we change what our family taught us, it becomes a habit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. so when uh, uh, like my mom, mm -hmm. you, you people would have to go to the back door. Oh. Only strangers or, or other people come in the front. Come in the front door. Oh. Uh, so, but as I grew, mm -hmm. that was not an issue for me. Right, right. So it became a habit not to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It becomes so a habit now a habit. that I don't, I don't do that anymore, because, but I grew up doing that. But that's a good habit. Yeah, it's good. And because it's good. You, you're ex helping us understand that there's good habit and then yes. there are bad habits. Yes. That's why some of these habits... And some of these beliefs do change. Absolutely. Yeah. And the thing about these, mm -hmm. uh, when I when I call these baggages, it's mm -hmm. not because they're bad. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's because That's who right. we are. That's it's right. not because they're bad. Right. And a lot of people, when you talk about baggage, they think mm -hmm. of the negative. Right. No. Mm -hmm. Remember, my book, it says, marriage the journey. Mm -hmm. In order to go on a journey, you need some baggage. Right, right. right. So you got to have it. So these things that I'm, we're talking about is, Things that you have to have, mm -hmm. and it's who you are. It's who you are. And they are vital to mm -hmm. that couple uh, uh, meeting their purpose in life, mm -hmm. really. Right. Because right. God put you together. Right. And he know what where you were born, what right. family you were he born. In. You he didn't knows. decide that. God right. decided that. Right. And so He right. knew where He put you, and know the experiences you went through mm -hmm. to be with who you are, mm -hmm. so He can push you together and to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And so, and yeah, that's that's a, that's a good point too, because um, uh, the difference is um, sometimes uh, people uh, go too fast and get divorces because of some of these yeah. uh, beliefs Small and beliefs. some of these yeah. habits like that. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes God, God is God is putting the two people together, and now He wants you to. Um, get to know each other mm -hmm. and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And if if we could do that in a marriage, that would be great for the marriage instead of walking out on the marriage. Absolutely, because, you know, um, you take a, 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 a person, uh, a spouse who is anxious. Mm -hmm. You got a, a Nick, the other spouse is uh, passive, they're mm -hmm. nonchalant. Mm -hmm. When you get those two together, mm -hmm. you got a person who is even keel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right down the middle. Mm -hmm. When you have, when you have the, the anxious person mm -hmm. who, who's going to worry about, oh, we need to do mm -hmm. this, we need to do this, right, and you right, got right. somebody who said, 
oh man, it don't, it don't, it, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. But when you get those two, two people talking mm -hmm. and going through an issue, right? Now you get mm -hmm. to the center where you're not anxious about it, right? But you're concerned about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So you're not lackadaisical now because right. because it's been brought to your attention, right? By the person who's anxious, brought it to your attention, right? And you who were passive. Now you're knowing about it, mm -hmm. and it could be a problem. Right, exactly. <laughs> be, but if you don't yeah. look at it, because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're lax, lackadaisical, mm -hmm. you're not concerned about it, it right. could really re re really be a problem. Right. But it don't have to be the problem that the anxious person thinks it is. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> it don't have to be to that extent, to but it could extent. be a concern. But it could be a concern. And so yeah. what happens is, now that they're both couple uh, 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 are using who they are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you get the truth of what you need to do because mm -hmm. you don't be too anxious about it, mm -hmm. but you now you got to be in the middle concerned about it. So the person that is a little anxious can now pull from the person that is kind Absolutely. of a little um, Absolutely. passive, passive, mm -hmm. and the passive person can get a little bit yes, anxious yes, a yes, little bit, yes. meaning that they they began to be a little Think bit concerned, a little bit more concerned, concerned about it. That's what it. is going on. Absolutely. So. The, if you talk and you communicate, you can kind of come to agreement Absolutely. and be a better person. Absolutely. And change comes. Absolutely. Change comes. Absolutely. And so now Absolutely. you, ooh, that's good. Mm-hmm. So Meekness, a slob. Wow. You know, that can be a problem in the marriage. Amen. Since you really got to deal with this person every day. <laughs> and for the slob, Neatness can be a problem. Uh -huh. And then with the neatness, uh, slob, a person that being a slob can be a problem. So really, actually, you've got to really come together and talk about this thing and see what you can do as far as coming together and see how you can work, work it out. Um, uh, neatness versus a person being a slob, or a slob versus a person being neat. And the next one is orderly and clutter. Mm -hmm. orderly and clutter. I know that you have uh, been around people who uh, is very orderly. They like things to be in order. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some folks can get work done, they can get it done in clutter. They even in the clutter. They mm -hmm. know where their stuff is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so therefore they can work their own strategies. You can't work their strategy, <laughs> but they can work their own strategy. So being orderly and someone being a cl clutter, uh, clutter type person, um, and uh, Pastor Butterfield talks about it in his book that these are things that people have grew up with. They are traits. They 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 have learned these uh, habits and uh, these types of behaviors. And so, what well, however way a person is, that is the way they think it should be. And so um, we have to really get to know and understand each other. If a person is, uh, they love clutter, they don't mind clutter, then that's just what, that's where they are. Mm -hmm. And if you're an orderly person, that's where you are. So each person has got to try to understand the other, all right, mm -hmm. as you try to understand your own self. That's right. Uh, and the next uh, is uh, promiscuous and... Monogamous, and let me tell you, um, uh, promiscuous is having uh, many sex partners, mm -hmm. and monogamous is uh, having only one sex partner, mm -hmm. your spouse, mm -hmm. and so these two, it, it really can be a problem if you have someone and you are married to someone and, and they're promiscuous, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want your spouse out uh, having sex with other people. And if you're promiscuous, you, you may be having sex with more than one other mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. outside of your marriage, but you've mm -hmm. got to know that that is not uh, the way the Lord has said that we should do it. He, he said that we should have only one, one, one spouse, and uh, be having sex with only one person, and that is uh, your spouse. Yeah. So, and that is the word. So we have to stand on the word and know what the word is saying. And we have to make sure that we are communicating with our spouse so they will also understand where you are. Um, each person can begin to understand um, each other. Uh, even the uh, monogamous uh, person can begin to understand the promiscuous 
a person um, through the eyes of their love uh, for for one another. Uh, but the, the key is, is that because if a person, the only thing they have been seeing is they great granddaddy, they granddaddy, they their daddy, their mother, everybody that they just about know in their family was promiscuous. That's what they have learned. This is this is a learned behavior. They have learned that. And so really actually they kind of think it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you got the monogamous a uh, person that know uh, that is not okay. Mm -hmm. They want to go by the word of God, number one, and um, through their, what they have seen in their families is uh, mom and daddy marrying and, you know, and it's just them. Mm -hmm. And even if something did go on in a relationship with their mother and father, they knew and taught them the right thing that it should not be other people in your relationship. It should just be a husband and wife mm -hmm. that's coming together as one. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that we begin to understand all of these things. And for those of you that is not married yet, these are some of the things that you, you should talk about and really get to know uh, the person that you are dealing with. Um, and uh, Pastor Butterfield had mentioned to us that we should not uh, talk about some of these things with people casually. It should. It need to be people um, that is is and get them yeah, put a ring on the finger. Uh, you know that they mean business. Right. You don't give everybody all of your business. Right. You do not tell people all of your business. Right. You got to make sure that they understand uh, where you are and 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 uh, not being able. You don't have to be sharing everything uh, with that person until you know that they are committed to marriage, even if maybe it don't work. But the thing is, is that that is a decision that you have made that um, you're going to get married, okay? You know, um, with the promiscuous person, because it's a habit, mm -hmm. and you know, habit of things you do without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. you, you just do them because do it. it's, it's mm -hmm. what you do. And mm -hmm. so, even though they found somebody that they love and they want to get married to them, mm -hmm. but because that habit has not been mm -hmm. broken, mm -hmm. they get, you find some people get married and in love with that person, mm -hmm. and after that uh, uh, euphoria have died off, mm -hmm. that habit kicked back in, mm -hmm. and before you know it, they start, to cheat, start cheating. Mm -hmm. And it ain't their intention to do that, mm -hmm. but because of this habit they have, Mm -hmm. They're falling back into it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like they say, uh, it takes 21 days to do the opposite thing to break a habit. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you have to have an intention mm -hmm. on breaking that habit and recognizing that it's a bad habit. Mm -hmm. right. Some habits right. are good. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Being monogamous is a good habit mm -hmm. right. to a married person. Right. Right. And so right. that, that what we're saying that these habits are all not, not bad. Right. And so being monogamous is a, is a habit that that person say, oh, I'm not going to be sleeping around. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be doing that. And they're just not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because of what they're seeing right. the happen to their mama, their daddy, mm -hmm. their cousins, their aunties. Mm -hmm. or, and say, when they make up their mind, that's not going to be me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they develop a habit of being monogamous. Mm -hmm. And so the same way how somebody be, could be could promiscuous mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, the men in my family, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you ain't a man unless you uh, have five or 15 women, mm -hmm. you know? And so we got to change these habits to let them know, no, that's not the way to have a successful marriage. Right. You right. can't do that to have an successful marriage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And the last one is night owl. <laughs> And that is, uh, you love to stay up late, you know. And before I got married um, to Pastor Butterfield, I used to stay up late at night. I would be pitter patting around the house all in the midnight hour. Upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. And, um, but lights was on everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I was really a night owl. <laughs> And then I got married to him. I got, uh, you know, kind of settled, um, uh, relaxed, uh, comfortable and everything. And he liked to stay up late and he liked to keep, the, he liked to turn the lights down low. I mean, he come out of a room or come into a room, he turned the lights off. Mm 
Likes. And so, yeah, likes. And so that's his word, likes. And um, and so um, I began to get sleepy early. <laughs> so he wasn't understanding. Now, yeah, I thought you was a night owl and you're trying to go to sleep at 10. <laughs> What's going on here? And so what happened is I, I found out and I realized that I used to have the lights on all over the house. And uh, that now I had gotten relaxed in the house. I'm not scared of somebody coming in the back door. Uh, somebody still could come in the back door, but I'm not scared that somebody's coming in the back door. I'm just, now I'm just relaxed. I'm comfortable. So now the lights are down low, I get sleepy. But I want you to know that um, we stay up pretty late. We done came to a media. Sometimes we go to bed early. Uh, we'd be ready to go to bed early. And he, the change that he has made, that he go to bed early sometimes because um, he would always go to bed late. Um, but we have to stay up and watch Perry Mesa, which comes on at 11.30. And even though we have seen these shows three and four times, we stay up to watch Perry Mesa at 11.30 and it goes off at 12.30. And after that, sometime after that, we go to bed. Mm -hmm. So we have come to a meeting. We, we are really satisfied kind of the way that we uh, do things uh, as far as um, going to bed. We pretty, we pretty even kill on that uh, because sometimes we both would be ready to go to bed mm -hmm. around 10. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So we just bless the Lord and give him glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you heard about the habits. Now let's deal with the last part of the baggage. Uh, we have the, uh, the family traits, we have the beliefs, we have the habits, and now we have the last part, which is it's so vital to our being, which is called unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. And unresolved issues are co a component of who we really are. And it's based on traumatic experience that occur through our lifetime mm -hmm. and mostly through our formative years that we have not uh, probably, probably grieved mm -hmm. and, and, and released and got them resolved. Mm -hmm. And so they become issues and they impact how we think, right. how we see our perspective change. Uh, uh, if you've been raped by a man, you, 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 you look at men differently. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you look at sex differently mm -hmm. uh, uh, because of that uh, traumatic experience. You look at love differently when you see uh, your father mistreating your mama. And when you see your mama mistreating your, your, your dad, mm -hmm. you, you, you have a different perspective on what really love looks like. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so uh, these things uh, uh, changes our thinking mm -hmm. and they give us thinking thinking. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you when you're hurt by somebody, uh, 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 as we learn in, in our classes that we have taken, uh, it, it 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 teaches you that uh, uh, hurting people hurt people, and uh, the the most hurt people is a person who is already hurt. Mm -hmm. He hurt them. He hurt himself. Mm -hmm. And so we got to make sure that we get these resolved issues. Mm -hmm. And some of them, are, uh, you you might laugh at them. Uh, some of them are really, uh, they call um, middle side, middle child syndrome. Mm -hmm. You can be the baby. You have you can mm -hmm. form an issue with that. You can be the oldest child. Mm -hmm. you, you got an issue with that. You can be short in statue. They call it Napoleon uh, stat, uh, syndrome. And you, got, you can be bipolar. You can be all these things happen because of something happened during your, tri your childhood mm -hmm. that have impacted the way you see things and the way you think about things. So we have to make sure that we check out mm -hmm. ourselves. Because sometimes we don't even realize that we do have unresolved issues. Right, right, because right. we have suppressed them so long mm -hmm. that we think it don't exist. Mm -hmm. And so, but when an opportunity or an event happens, it mm -hmm. can trigger mm -hmm. that unresolved issue. And then you can have a problem in your relationship. Right. And you know uh, you won't be able to love properly. Let's just say uh, you know you uh, your first love 
you're feeling so much about this person. I mean, you would give, you would die for them. Mm -hmm. You would give them anything in the world. I mean, nobody on earth like them. Mm -hmm. You know, you kiss the ground they walk on. Mm -hmm. You know, and then all of a sudden, now they quit you. They mm -hmm. drop you like a hot cake, and now your heart is broken. Mm -hmm. But you didn't get your heart back from that person because you're still hurt. Mm -hmm. You did not grieve that loss of that relationship with mm -hmm. that person, so now you still hurt. And sometimes when we try to uh, 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 medicate our own hurt, yeah. we go into another relationship they call rebounding. Mm -hmm. And so you get into a relationship because you really don't like the person you're in a relationship. Your heart is still with the other person. Mm -hmm. you no longer going to like that person, so you're going to have to another person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. on and on and on we go through relationships trying to medicate mm -hmm. that hurt. But we have to grieve it. We have to go through the grieving process. Yeah. And have to understand that this thing doesn't uh, get fixed overnight. Mm -mm. It's not a one-time uh, fix mm -hmm. because it's a dramatic experience. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, and we learn in uh, a divorce care class, that when somebody uh, uh, come together as husband and wife, they when they uh, consummate, they become one. Mm -hmm. And so when you separate, when you divorce, mm -hmm. you, you don't just separate, you tear. Mm -hmm. And that tear, that's a wound mm -hmm. that has to heal. Yeah. And if so if you don't let that wound heal, it's going to be like a man who have yeah. had his foot amputated. Mm -hmm. And he's still walking on it, for, forgetting or, or ignoring that he has a, 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 his, his foot is, is, is cut off. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you keep you keep losing it, and after a while, the bone is going to come through. Mm -hmm. and you're going to see some things. So it's the same way with our heart. We have to make sure that we get healed. Mm -hmm. Take some time. It's not going to take. Uh, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. but take some time to get healed from that hurt, because yeah. hurt people hurt, hurt people. people. We don't want that for you. We want you to understand whatever unresolved issues you have. And these, again, you don't tell this to everybody. Right. Make sure as a person who has put a ring on your finger, mm -hmm. somebody that you have made a commitment that this time next year or mm -hmm. two years from now, we're going to be one, we're going to be married. Then you tell mm -hmm. that person, you, and you, you find these things out for yourself first. Mm -hmm. Right. Before you even talk to anybody, mm -hmm. find out what problems, why, why you, why, why, why you have, why are you so insecure? Mm -hmm. Why your mm -hmm. self-esteem is so low? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why you behave the way you do? Mm -hmm. And if you go back in your childhood and all the way up, you'll be able to identify some stuff mm -hmm. that happened in your life that made a shift right, right. in you. And so now you can go back and say, okay, how do I go and recover mm -hmm. from that? How can I resolve that issue? Mm -hmm. Because if mama uh, 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 didn't treat me right because I was the oldest, uh, uh, mama had a lot on her hand. Mm -hmm. Mama didn't love me less because she couldn't give me the attention that I was looking for. Right. So now you start to go back and, and start to understand that it wasn't about you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, so this would bring healing. Now you're not upset with mama no more. You're not upset with women no more. Mm -hmm. uh, your daddy didn't treat you right. You're not upset with men anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be responsive to men like you were doing before. Because mm -hmm. you know when uh, 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 your father do this to you or do this to your mom, you start to treat all men mm -hmm. the same way. Mm -hmm. And so which is not good. It's not healthy. Because God got a man just for you if you're a woman. And vice versa. And so we have to make sure that we get all of our unresolved issues mm -hmm. resolved mm -hmm. so we can become the whole mm -hmm. good person that that man or that woman is looking for. Right. And right. you will be able to have the marriage that God always wanted you to have. So uh, you see insecurities come up. Why am I insecure? Why am mm -hmm. I feeling this way? Why? All you can mm -hmm. go back to your life. Take a look at you. Mm -hmm. At yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, uh, Terry Alexander have a great book called Take a Look Inside. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself and see mm -hmm. why am I why do I respond that way? Why wouldn't somebody said a certain word to me? It just get I just mm -hmm. go off the handle. Mm -hmm. I get upset. Mm -hmm. what, what why is that? And if you go back through your life, you'll be able to identify. Mm -hmm. And when you do, go back there mm -hmm. and forgive the person and the issue. 
Mm -hmm. When you forgive, that will free you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, mm -hmm. it will free you like you won't believe. It will free you. And so you'll be able to get, be, be that person that a husband or wife is looking for. Mm -hmm. So we want you to know that unresolved issues can be good for you or bad for you, but you have to resolve those issues. Don't let them unresolved. Don't let them stay unresolved. Solve them. You have the power to do it. Mm -hmm. But you got to identify them first. Yeah. So you got to know you have some. And so we hope that we can help you to start thinking about it and then start uh, concentrating on it and then go to work at it and become that person that God wants you to be. Because I guarantee you, if you do that, you will have the marriage that God always wanted you to have. Yeah. So we hope that you have learned something from this session. Mm -hmm. This baggage, uh, who we are. It's your family traits, your beliefs, your habits, and your unresolved issues. That's who you are in a nutshell, and that is your baggage. So we hope that you've been blessed by this, and we want you to listen to some couples who have went through this class and read the book and have uh, gleaned some things from it, and we want you to go on our website, order the book if you haven't got it yet. Because at the end of every chapter in the book, we have some discussion questions. We want you to go ahead and you answer those and email it to us mm -hmm. at marriageutopia.gmail.com. Marriageutopia at gmail.com. Marriageutopia at gmail.com. Email us the answers to your questions that you have so we can help you because we want you to definitely have Marriage Utopia. So until next time, be blessed. We're going to talk about our experience with Marriage the Journey, how to handle your baggage. The book was very enlightening and being married is definitely a journey. We highly recommend it and really enjoyed the class and the book. We found Pastor Butterfield's book to be very insightful. Well, I really enjoyed uh, the whole book from beginning to end. Um, we read the book and we were able to participate in the class. It was a multi-week session and it really was beneficial. We also found that it was so interesting. It really drew us in. You know, it, it brought things to our attention in the different chapters. They were lifting the experience of the book um, to a real life situation. Even though we've been married multiple years, there were still things we were able to pull from that that did help to enlighten our marriage and bring things to our consciousness as we move forward. Marriages ought to have an annual checkup. The annual marriage checkup is, is really impactful. Having a checkup, uh, which I consider it from, in, in stand, from the standpoint of a tune-up, but it's good to check in and check up. We do maintenance on our homes. We do maintenance on our cars on a regular basis. Because if you don't have that annual marriage checkup, um, you're really doing your marriage a disservice. So we got the opportunity to attend the class, Marriage the Journey, How Do You Handle Your Baggage? And that class was taught by Elder Stephen Butterfield and Pastor Ann Butterfield. To me, the class was a um, great refresher on how to um, respect each other, how to submit to each other, how to love and accept each other, even with our differences. But then we also learned some things uh, new uh, in the class and in the book that we think will help us continue to maintain a strong marriage. And so we were able to go home and then actually take what we talked about in class and then do that same thing with right. each other. Yeah. You know, being married 35 years, a lot of dynamics take place. And so going back and going over and rehashing those things that brought us together. You gotta be a good listener, and uh, you gotta be able to communicate with each other on a positive note. When you expose yourself, when you become real, you know, you become vulnerable, but at the same time, that means you trust in this person with your feelings and your emotions. Sometimes you have to, you have to listen to your spouse in order to get things done in life, in marriage, that is. You gotta be friends first as well. Uh, so basically that's what's kind of helped us together being friends to begin with. And the book allowed me to ultimately become a better husband by displaying or learning how to relay a lot of my emotions to my wife. His chapter in particular 
about love languages taught us a lot in terms of all the different expressions of love. I realized that your love language changes over time and what it was and in my 20s it's not necessarily what it is now. Every successful and strong marriage is based on good communication. I realized that I was communicating ineffectively, um, but I, I did learn what our two love languages were. It taught us how to cater to our love language so that each of us both will feel that special love for each other. It brings about a conversation and it have you talk with each other about where you've been, where you are now, and where you're going. We truly recommend it. We're thankful for the class as well as the opportunity to have been able to participate with the authors of this book. Uh, great experience in the class, great experience reading the book. This is all biblically based, yeah. very inspirational, mm -hmm. and it just lifted our whole ministry to another level mm -hmm. and brought us even closer to each other. So I would strongly suggest getting the book because it will make you have a conversation with each other about each section in there, about your baggage and all that you come through, and it'll make you think. So if you have the opportunity, make sure you get the book and also participate in, in the, the class, class as well. Yes. It's worthwhile. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Class is offered again. If there is another version of the book, we will be taking a part. It's a must read. If I had anything, it would be a number one seller.